Okay, moving right along, Pastor Ted Hager is with me, and uh, he wrote a couple articles. One is Suicide, Evangelicalism, and Sorrow, and it's about pastors and their children who are under stress taking their own lives. And I guess due to the stress, they don't know how to handle it. Uh, Pastor Haggard was uh, accused of being with a male prostitute and doing drugs. He just said he took a lie detection test and it proved that it wasn't true. Yet he admitted in the public that it was true, but he said that he meant something else, that we all sin. Pastor, did you, is it true you, you, you did drugs with this guy too? No, I've never done drugs with anybody. Oh, so that wasn't true either. No. Amazing. And, and actually, I took I took a hair follicle test that where they test whether or not you have any drugs like that in your system or have in the last several months, depending on how long your hair is. And my hair was long enough to have tested like four or five months back. Yeah. And uh, nothing there. And now, when you say that I had admitted publicly that I did it, I did not. What I said was, I said, some of the accusations are true. And well, what I said was, I said, but I am a moral man. Saying that some of them are true is an admission. Sure. I would never claim innocence. I'm just, I'm just saying that what he said I did was not true. And, and I've said that all along. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not been interesting. Now, this is, you and I are talking here about a seven- or eight-year-old story. That's amazing and, that it had been that long. Yeah, so it's kind of a, it, you're kind of uh, focusing on something that's that's moot and nobody cares about anymore. Yeah, I can hardly remember it myself. What I wanted to know from it, the most important thing to me about it. And, you hey, know, let me say something that's interesting, though. Yes. Do you know that uh, nobody, when they interview David Letterman, talk about his scandal. Right. And yep. when they interview Martha Stewart, they don't start off by wanting to talk about her scandal. And when they interview Michael Vick, they don't start off by wanting to talk about his scandal. We only do this in the church. Yeah. I want to ask, what, what you know... I, 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 I haven't heard Bill Clinton introduced uh, <laughs> being framed with Monica Lewinsky in years. That's true. That's and, absolutely true. Why is this happening to the church but not to other Well, you and I are folks? doing it right now. I know, but why is that, though? Why do because we tend to do it? Because it's interesting. And we, we in the church are so far off the gospel message, we think this is the point. Oh, I see. And, what and, I want, let me tell you what I what's most important to me about the whole thing. I don't particularly care about what happened, to be honest with you. But when you were going through that, you had built this... Uh, 14,000 member church and I thought I wonder what was it like what was going on in your mind and in and, and your soul of your belly while going through that did you feel that God had abandoned you or was he still with you? Never. Uh, God is perfectly clear in the scriptures that he'll leave the 99 to be with the one and in Matthew 25 it talks about how he actually prefers, you know, the least of these are brethren. And he says with perfect clarity that he came for for the sick. And he didn't even come for the righteous people. He, he If people think they're righteous, if they think they're okay, there's no redemption for them. And so, so I never felt abandoned by the Lord or forsaken by the Lord. Or I, and I have never been disappointed with the Lord. I've never been angry with the Lord. He has been a faithful, dependable, loyal, yeah. trustworthy yeah, he friend. Never, he never leaves us. Uh, Paul said that, and I, and, I, and I asked most pastors this question, Paul said that he, the things he didn't want to do, he found himself doing them, and the things that he did not want to do, he could not do. Right. Uh, um, and he realized that it wasn't him, but something had made a home in him and causes him to do the things he did not want to do. What is that that he was talking about? And I, that is still part of human nature. What is That's that? Right. And can we overcome that? That is sin. And uh, it's the old sin nature that's within every person. 
And that's why Paul encourages us to crucify ourselves. That doesn't mean literally do it, but to get rid of the old sin nature that's inside of us and put on our new self, who is Christ. And that is part of the process. See, I maintain that when you see somebody going through a crisis, it's them becoming the men or the women that they've always prayed to be. Yeah. Because I agree with that. A person going through a crisis is not bad. A person going through a crisis is is a a refining process. It's an opportunity for them to be revealed in their own hearts to themselves about whether they are authentically good men or not. So when the crisis comes, if they pay off accusers and hire publicists and won't humble themselves and things like that, that reveals them. I absolutely agree with that. See, I maintain... That now this is not our response to, uh, oh, by the way, he does say right after that passage in Romans 7, where he talks about how he does the things he doesn't want to do and doesn't do the things he does want to do. Right. He says, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And what that means is that the key to freedom from those things is to stop trying to clean yourself up according to the law, but start allowing the forgiveness of the Lord to cleanse you. So there's no condemnation so that you can receive freedom. That's deep. I totally understand that. I understand it to the mat. Yeah. So so when we condemn each other or condemn ourselves, we're not solving the sin problem. We're just creating a worse one. I noticed that the uh, and and, and this leads into your article, Suicide Evangelicalism and Sorrow. I've noticed that the Christian... Um, are quicker to judge than the non-Christians are to judge one another. And that's what God tell us not to do. That's and right. They and can claim God. They give money to the church. They read the scriptures. But as soon as something go wrong or not go wrong, they judge you on it. And you become an outcast right away. Yeah. And, and of course, that's a denial of their own sinfulness. It reveals them. And so here's the way it works. Here's the formula that works. For us to be Christians, it means we're 100% dependent on the righteousness of Christ and Christ alone yes. for eternal life. Yes. To the degree that we think we're pretty impressive and we're impressed with our own self-righteousness is the degree that we're not trusting Christ. So how do we know if we're self-righteous or not? Here's how we know. When we respond to someone else's sin. To the degree that we respond to someone else's sin with judgment, condemnation, uh, anger, blaming, condemning, any of that, that's the degree that we're impressed with ourselves. That makes so much sense, sir. to, To the degree that we respond to someone else's sin with healing, redemption, compassion, kindness, gentleness, Uh, restoration is the degree that we are fully persuaded that Christ and Christ alone is our own righteousness. That is all right with me. It makes sense. Right. So when you, when, when let's say the youth pastor gets in trouble by peeking in the neighbor's window. Yes. All right. The people that respond to that youth pastor with hate, judgment, embarrassment, punishment, uh, bitterness, gossip, those people think they're righteous. To the degree that people respond to that youth pastor with kindness, compassion, a desire that he be healed, a desire that he be okay, a concern for his family, all the things Christ does, that's the degree that they trust in Christ, that they know that Christ is their righteousness and Christ alone is their righteousness. Because when we know Christ is our righteousness, we don't want to judge and and condemn me, because we don't want to be judged and condemned. Let me take a quick break. When I come back, I want to get into your article right after this break.